One of the more powerful capabilities of PHP and ASP when you combine them with HTML is their ability to process forms on the server. There are two basic HTML methods for transmitting data from a form to a PHP application. They are GET and POST. Let's first examine GET. When using GET, each form element creates its own PHP variable. So if you look at the following example, we have some basic HTML tags, and within these tags we have open and closing form tags. So in our form, which is called new game, we're using the get method as opposed to the post method. And the action is going to be uh, new game.php. So it'll utilize a PHP script. Now, what do we have in this form? We have a text field to hold the character's name, and we have some radio buttons to select gender, male or female. Uh, when they click the submit button, in this case, the method will be get. So what happens in our PHP? Well, if you look at the open and closing PHP tags, we're using the isSet method to determine whether or not uh, we actually have a value for care name and care gender. So if we do, then we'll display the character's name and what it's set to. And if we do for gender, we'll display the character's gender and what it's set to. And if not, we won't display anything. Chief characteristic I want you to notice here is how those values are accessed. In this case, each variable is distinct and separate, care name and care gender. In this example, we're going to use the get method of form submission with PHP. Now, when we use get, instead of sending individual variables by name, it sends them all inside of an array. And the way we'll access those variables is from the request array. And also notice that there's no double quotes like you would normally with uh, array subscript values. So let's kind of walk through the HTML and the PHP code real quick before we run the example. Nothing out of the ordinary here, just basic HTML, open and closing tags, head tags, title tags, the body tag here, and the closing body tag down here. Background will be black, text will be white. That's just standard HTML. Our first bit of PHP is right here between these tags. And there's no real reason for it other than just using the echo statement. So we call the echo function and we're going to display using git and HTML forms. Here's the title of the page and we're changing the font and the color. And then here we have a form. And this is kind of where most of the action takes place, at least on the HTML side, in these form tags here. So we're using the get method. That way when we click on the submit button, which, you know, whose caption we'll see again, it's going to basically access the get method in the form, and it's going to go and call example underscore 06.php. That's specified here in the action part of the form. Okay. So when that happens, then all of these input tags, you know, here we have a text box to get the character's name, and here we have two radio buttons for gender. Right here is the first radio button, and right here is the second radio button right here. Well, those are all going to be sent. So right here where name is equal to character name, that'll be an element in the request array. And right here where name is equal to care gender, that'll be another element in the request array. And the value of those elements will either be male or female or whatever the player chooses to type into the name box there. Okay, so they click the submit button whose caption says begin. It uses the get method. The action is it calls the script example underscore 06.php. And we're already at this point to look at the PHP code. Down here we have a basic HTML table, open and closing tags. It's just one row, but there are two columns. The first column is where our PHP code is going to be written. And the second column right here is simply an image. We're going to display an image here, a JPEG. Okay. So let's look at the PHP code where our PHP tags are here, which are the open and closing tags. We're using the isSet method, and so we're going to see whether or not uh, you know anything actually exists for a character name or care name. So if it's null, then we're going to display the character name has not been set. But if it's not null, if it does have a value, in other words, the player typed something and they submitted it then we'll display the character name has been set, okay? Here, regardless of whether it's been set or not, we're going to display the value. So the first time we load the page, you won't see anything at all because it's null. But then once we type a name in the input field and then click the submit button and reload the page, well, then it'll have a value. Same thing here for care gender. 
if it's uh, you know been set with the is set method and it returns true, it's going to say care gender has been set. If not, care gender has not been set. Regardless whether it's been set or not, it's going to display request and care gender. So again, the first time we load the page, it will be null. You won't see anything. But once we check one of those radio buttons to give it a value and then click the submit button, then it won't be null and it'll show up male or female. Okay, so that just kind of you know walks through or steps through the code there. And one more time, just trying to review things here. Remember that when you use the get method inside of a form, instead of sending the variables one at a time, it incorporates them all into the built-in request array. And also, you don't need to use double quotes like you normally would use if you were using strings inside of an array. So, all that being said, let's run the example and see what happens. So here's the HTML web page. Okay, here's our text. Inside of our form, here's our name field, our input box, and our two radio buttons here. Okay, so notice that the first time we load the page, character name has not been set, character gender has not been set, and notice that name is null, there's nothing there, and gender is null, there's nothing there. So let's type something. Hatsune Miku will be our name, and she's female, so we'll check female, and then if we click begin, which is the caption for the submit button, now these values are no longer null. So our PHP output changes and dynamically writes to HTML to say that the character name has been set, the character gender has been set, the character's name is now set to Hatsune Miku, and the character's gender is now set to female. Now let's take a look at the post method. When using the post method, data is placed into the global PHP array, or dollar symbol underscore post. So look at the following HTML. In this example, we have about the same HTML as we did previously. However, if you look at the form, this time, instead of get, the method is specified as post. Now we're calling the same script, and if you look, the field names are the same inside of the HTML and the form tags. However, look at the PHP code inside the PHP tags at the bottom. Notice how it's changed. Instead of accessing each variable separately and distinctly, we're accessing the post array. And within that post array, we're using the field name uh, as an index or a reference to get at the element and the value that it contains. In this next example, we're also dealing with form processing, but instead of using the form get method, we're going to use the form post method. So let's look at the basic HTML and PHP code before we run it through the PHP interpreter. Standard HTML here, open and closing HTML tag, open and closing head tags, open and closing title tags, Nothing you know, out of the ordinary here, just a body tag, closing body tag. And our first bit of PHP code here is just going to echo or display using the post and HTML forms. Change the font, here's the title, Hatsune Miku Madness. And we have a table here, okay? And this table has one single row and two columns. The first column is going to contain all of our form code in HTML. And the second column is just going to contain an image, Hatsune1.jpg. Let's take a quick look at the form. The form's name is new game. Again, its method is post, not get. And its action is to call the PHP script example underscore 07.php. We have several input fields, in this case a text field for the character's name, two radio buttons for gender, male or female, and a selection structure, which is a drop-down list in HTML, where they can choose a companion, Hatsune Miku, and so forth. In addition, they can choose a pony assistant and this will be in the form of a checkbox in the form, and the value will be set on ponies, in this case an array of values. And the reason I did it this way is that way if they wanted to, you know, potentially they could check more than one box. If they were radio buttons, we wouldn't want that to be so. We'd only want them to check one. But these are just normal square checkboxes, and if so, you know, if they so desire, I'm gonna let them choose more than one. So those values would be stored in the array here. Finally, we have our you know, in this case, a reset and a submit button. And the captions are begin and reset. Close the form. So that kind of gives you an idea of the, the basic HTML there. Now, the very first time they load the page, this PHP script is going to be processed here on the server and then sent to the client. So what is it going to do? It's going to display, in this case, uh, two HTML line breaks and processed form output under this dashed line. And then if post, underscore post, which remember that's the array of variables that you get when you use the form post method. 
So if it's not null, then this bit of code here, this block of code will be processed. Now, the first time they load the page, it's going to be null. Um, the player hasn't submitted any information yet, so you know all those values would be null. And so instead of this happening the first time, the else block is going to be executed the first time. It'll simply say this form is not yet complete, enter all data and submit. And we could compound this with you know um, logical ands if we wanted to make sure that they filled out every little bit and piece of the form. But for the example here, I'm only going to base it on care name or character name. Okay, so let's say that they go through and they fill everything out and then they click on the submit button to post the information. Well, that's going to come in under the underscore post array. And so I'm just going to take each of those elements and assign them to a variable here, character name, character gender, character companion, character assistant. And it's care name, care gender, companion, ponies. And I want you to see how this matches up here. Care name. All right, well, from the HTML form, notice that that was this text field right here. Okay. Care gender. From the HTML form, notice that that was these, or that was these two radio buttons right here. Not sure the grammar there. That were these, that was these, whatever. But Okay. Companion, in this case, that's our selection structure. Okay, and one of these would be selected and chosen there. And finally, ponies, well, that's our array here. Uh, it could just be one checkbox, but it might be more than one checkbox because they aren't radio buttons. They're normal checkboxes, so we're using an array. Now, we're using uh, uh, just a normal PHP variable here to you know hold that entire array, and we can do that because the name of an array, just as in Java and C++, acts as a pointer to the entire array structure itself, okay? So we get all that, we assign it to these variables, and then what happens? Well, we're simply going to display the character's name, their gender, and their companion, whoever they may have chosen. And then we're going to iterate in a for loop here. We don't know how many checkboxes uh, they've checked. Could be one, uh, could be none, could be three, whatever. So because we don't know that, we're going to use the count method, and that kind of gives us the ability to code a dynamic loop. It'll loop for as many times as it needs to for as many elements as happen to be in the array ponies. And then we're going to display with the echo statement, or the echo function here, uh, Pony Assistant. We're adding one to offset for the fence post or off by one error, because you know, remember, arrays are indexed to 0, 1, 2, not 1, 2, 3. But we want the player to see 1, 2, 3, not 0, 1, 2. So we're just adding that one there. And we're concatenating this uh, together here. And then finally, we're going to display uh, you know, whatever value happens to be stored in that element. And again, Character Assistant here came in from ponies here, which in the HTML form was this array here in these checkboxes. So I just want you to understand the relationship or to sort of see how that works. Okay, so let's run it and see what it looks like and how it performs to the PHP interpreter. So here's our page, Hatsune Miku Madness, play a new game. And uh, let's enter a player's name. Uh, Amu Hanamarami, gender female, we could choose different companions here, but we'll just go with Hatsune Miku. Um, let's choose two pony assistants. I'm going to choose Lemon Sprinkles and Rainbow Dash. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the Begin button, which will submit the information from the form. Now, because we haven't done that yet, this is the first time we've loaded the page, notice what it displays down here. This form is not yet complete. Enter all data and submit. Well, that's because the post array is null. Now watch what happens when I click Submit. Processed form output. Name, Amu Hanamurami, gender female, companion, Hatsune Miku. Pony assistant one is Rainbow Dash, pony assistant two is Lemon Sprinkles. Okay, and just to show you how the count method works, um, let's try something else here. Let's do tester and mail, and we'll choose uh, Kagamin Ren. And this time we'll choose three pony assistants right here. And I'm going to click on submit. And again, notice one, two, three, Rainbow Dash, Starlight, Lemon Sprinkles. Okay, so just kind of give you an idea of how that works and sort of contrast a little bit some of the differences between uh, get and post. Remember, the get HTML form method makes use of PHP's built-in request array to retrieve and store values. It transfers data and name value pairs to the server via the URL. This has the effect of making it less secure by exposing client-server communication and places a restriction on the types of characters you can use to name variables, since they must be compatible with URL restrictions. Remember, the post HTML4 method makes use of PHP's built-in post array to retrieve and store values. 
It provides a more secure means of sending data from the client to the server, since it is not sent as part of the URL, and therefore not as exposed. Also, it does not have the URL syntax restrictions that Git has, and so offers more flexibility in the way variables can be named.